All right, everybody, here we go. Got another video lesson for you. And here there is no uh, do now or anything. It is just a quick lesson. It's probably gonna be the shortest or one of the shorter videos that we've done. Uh, we are talking about the American identity and what American society is and looks like. So we're gonna talk about continuities and changes in American culture from 1754 through 1800. Again, we all, the, whole, the buck stops at 1800. Because once we hit Jefferson, it's a whole different ballgame. So, a couple of terms. American Republicanism. This one is probably one you have not seen before. The rest of these you might have, probably have. So, if you know these already, or if you've already written them somewhere else, just keep them in mind as we move forward. And we're going to skip the big brain question and get right into it. So, whoop. All right, so. American Republicanism is a series of ideas and promises that the system is based on. The, the American system, that is. Um, it helped shape American society and differentiate it from older European nations. So basically, American republicanism is like the ideas and the promises that the system of the U.S. is based on. All right. Uh, if the United States is a pie, American republicanism are the ingredients. It's what makes the United States the United States, at least in theory. It shapes American society. It makes America different from European countries because it is very much different. I've told you before, it's like an experiment of all these weird ideas. So let's move forward with that and talk about it. So there's a few things that make up this pie, right? There's a few ingredients. Um, one of them and a big one is individual rights and liberty. Um, to make that, you need virtuous, like autonomous citizens. What does that mean? It means that people like operate on their own and they're genuinely good, like virtuous. They have good morals. Um, they're there to promote the common good, not necessarily the good for you or I, the good for everybody, right? And that's what the idea behind individual rights and liberty is, right? Like the more liberty you have, the more autonomous you are, but therefore the more virtuous you have to be in order to promote the common good. It's a, it's a it's an interesting topic that still gets debated today. Popular sovereignty is the next one. And this is a big one. This is to avoid mob rule, right? There's no tyranny of the majority here, no direct democracy. We establish a republic with a re representative democracy, which means we pick somebody freely, like, you know, and they then govern for us, so to speak. Uh, it's attempt to avoid the two types of tyranny, right? There's tyranny of a really strong government, and then there's tyranny of a majority of just the 51% always telling the 49% what to do. You, they want to avoid that. They're very scared of that. There is a inherent rejection of monarchy and the um, art aristocracy. And what the aristocracy means is talking about like noble people, like Lord so-and-so and Dutch and Duchess of blank and the Duke of so-and-so, like they don't do that in the United States. They don't like that. It's very anti that here. So what first thing you get, you get a limited government based on a written constitution that separates powers and puts checks and balances in place so that those separate groups of power do not overpower one another. Right? Checks and balances maintains that the branches all work together. No one branch gets too strong. They promote the idea of like the plain folk, the yeoman farmer, the regular dude, right? Regular Joe, average Joe or average Jane. Like they, they promote the regular person. Um, it's aimed at preventing dominance of wealthy elites. And the reason I sort of chuckle at that is because obviously there are wealthy elites, but those wealthy elites are not necessarily supposed to make all the rules, right? So like in an old European system, when you're a lord or when you're a noble, it stays within the family. Like those noble families are all like, they they maintain power from their nobility and their noble class. That's what's happening in France. That's why it's on fire during this time, right? Because the people finally lived up and realized what, the, what was going on. Um, now, there's arguments that we're, you know, we don't really, we're not gonna get into today. This isn't government class. Like, well, don't we have wealthy elites now? We do, but they don't control all the wealth in a way because there's always... I'll make the argument to you here, and I'll leave it at that. There's always a case that there's always a way to get wealth for yourself. And I don't mean like me being a history teacher. I'm living better than I did growing up or than my parents. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, 
under a system like this one, and this will, maybe it'll be more evident in the next slide, but oh, uh, in a system like ours, with where opportunity is promoted, right? It's um, the idea, like, so I always use the example of like, if wealth was always controlled by just the people that had it and like the, the status and all that stuff, then you would have never gotten like YouTube stars that are very wealthy and very famous from being famous on YouTube, right? Like Hollywood wouldn't have let that happen in an older system. Now I get that the internet and all that makes it harder for that, but new industries like computer millionaires in the nine, in the 1990s and eighties, like becoming very mm, wealthy other like nobles don't let that, like that doesn't happen. So the same way where nobles are involved and like when that wealth is held like that. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind, right? Like the idea of like people like to trash Jeff Bezos, the Amazon guy, but he literally owned a internet bookstore that made no money for years and years and years. And then over time came up with the idea of maybe I should sell more stuff. And now he <laughs> owns the whole world. But under the system, the idea, and whether you agree with it or not, you know, it's, it's open to interpretation, I'll give you, is that there's opportunity for you to get that wealth, that plain person, right? Plain, plain Jane, average Joe, average Jane can make that wealth and get that. There's no wealthy elite controlling it, so to speak. At least that's the idea. That's the ingredient in the pie. So civic virtue and civic duty. This is also something that is super important and something that tends to get ignored, especially now. Um, they promote like responsibility in education. You have a responsibility as an American to vote, to be educated, to know what you're voting about, right? So many people now a days are going to vote and they maybe don't know everything. Now it's one thing to disagree. You can be, I firmly believe, and I don't want to ever see it like with you guys, don't ever do this, but like I firmly believe that two people with very different political beliefs that are both educated on the subject can disagree with one another and still respect each other. Sure, it might get heated, but there's there should always be respect for one another. Always. And you can do that. I have very good friends that don't agree with me politically. And I am very good friends with people I don't agree with politically. And I think that's important because I think if you're two, if you're hanging around people that agree with you all the time, you're never going to grow as a person because you should always be open to changing your idea if somebody is able to convince you and if you're able to hear their argument and understand it. You should always be open. They should always be open-minded, not too open-minded, mind you, right? It's like you should always know when to be firm and when to not be, but you should always be willing to listen. You should always be willing to be kind to somebody, right? Like, like the shirt says, be kind. I just realized you can't see my shirt because I'm not on camera, but oh well. <laughs> and we're not in person. So, that is one thing, civic duty, civic virtue, right? The idea of like, you got to be responsible, you got to be educated. So you can go out and vote or you can go out and serve on a jury, things like that. Avoidance and prevention of corruption. Subvert persona wealth, personal, I should say, and ambitions for the community. So the idea, again, this is an idea, is that you're not in government for wealth you're in it for or power you're in it for the people to help that's why like at the time if you were a congressperson and kind of to an extent now they give you a little bit of money to live off but like if you're wealthy you were wealthy from something else right like jefferson being a wealthy landowner and slave trader is what made him wealthy not being the president um, it's, it's not a, it's the idea. Again, it's an idea. Whether or not it's true in practice today in 2020 is not something we get into. This is just the idea. It's the ingredient in the pie. Like it's the, the point is that it's not supposed to be corrupted. That's why everything changes so quickly. And it's not there at the start. There are certain problems like Jackson will do and some others that will come up, right? Like when we talk about the Sedition Acts yesterday and you talked about, um, we talked about ja Adams. Adams uh, literally taking away free speech, right? Like it's not perfect, but it gets, it, it, it's an attempt. And then e equality and equal opportunity. That's kind of that YouTuber idea, right? Of like, everybody has the opportunity to make money if they find it. 
And again, these are the ingredients for the pie that is America. And I'm using that analogy to tell you this. It is obvious and a given that not everybody received these things in 1800. And I'll pick the last year that this, that right from 54 to 1800, in 1800. No, it's very obvious that that didn't happen. Women didn't get this stuff, right? Blacks didn't get this stuff. I don't have to tell you that. You know that. You're smart. You know this. But that is still the, that's why I say it's an idea. It's it's the ingredients. It's the, the, the pie is made of that. Because what you see, and you see it now, right? When you tell somebody, hey, you should have liberty. Like you whisper, it's an idea, right? You whisper it in their ear. You can't put that back in the box once you've opened it. it it's going to spread. People are going to want that. And it's going to, hey, I'm in America. I want my cut of the pie. I want my piece, right? Women, the women's rights movement, they want their piece. Um, African-Americans, blacks with the, you know, currently a lot of them are most of them are still slaves they want their piece of the pie that's what the civil rights movement's about that's what the chicano movement was about in the 60s and 70s that's what anything you see right whether it's gay rights whether it's it's people that should be or at least the idea of the ones that we're going to talk about especially here in class right that's i want that piece of the american pie i want my chance at equal opportunity i want my chance at being able to exercise my individual liberty it's you're enjoying that piece of pie, I want my piece. And that's the ideas that American Republicanism is kind of based on. Whether or not you agree with everything, whether or not you think that's changed till now, that's the idea. And when you see like Dr. King or whether you see like, everybody says this of Chavez, so I'm going to just say like Jose Angel Gutierrez, like that when they fight for their rights in the 60s, they're fighting for their cut of this pie because they feel like they've been living in the United States not getting it. And they were, for the most part, I would say they were right. So we're going to turn and we're going to move into American society. So there's no aristocratic titles, aristocratic, I should say. So there's no lords or dukes. We already talked about that. New opportunities. You don't need all of this. Just get it brief, right? Families used to produce only for themselves, but now they work on demand, getting stuff for the demands of new markets and old ones. So making stuff to sell and a new class of entrepreneurs and investors will grow. And there is also claims to Western lands in the United States, west of the Appalachian. That is also opportunity. There is a split, like a dual identity between manufacturing and farming. If you might have guessed, manufacturing will be in the north, farming will be in the south. And then there is a separation of church and state. Churches lose support of the state, of the federal. Women in the New Republic. Political rights and property rights are limited. They get increased marital rights in the sense that now it's something they at least have a say in. Oh, I lost that. Oh, I just realized you can't see my slide. So that's the American Society slide that I talked about. So you might need the info from there. Women, again, Republican motherhood. We talked, we spent plenty of time on this already. So we're just going to move on. Just know that. This is something for you to look at. We're not, you don't need to write notes on it. Just keep this in mind. It's something that I like to point out. This is a percentage of freed blacks out of the total population in 1800. So in Massachusetts, 100% of African Americans in there are free. That's 7,378. Vermont, same thing. New Hampshire, it's 99% with 855. Let's move on to the, let's say, let's go to some of the southern states. Virginia, 6% are free. It's 20,000. Should show you how many are in Virginia versus Massachusetts. 5% in North Carolina, 2% in Georgia, and Kentucky, and Tennessee. In total in the United States, 11% are freed, 108,000 out of 1 million population. So a little more than 10%, maybe 11%, let's say. Just keep that in mind. It is a rough number. It is true, though. It's something I want you to visualize. Some native conflicts never going to go away. There will be trade and intercourse acts, basically ways to kind of peace and keep these things. You'll get civilization programs, which means that certain tribes in the Western United States during this time are going to attempt to be civilized by the people. We'll get more into this later on, though. So I just want you to see it and have it as a reference. So that's it. Exit tickets in Google Classroom. I lied. I said this would be short, and it was going to be short, but then we got into the American Republicanism, and I, I blabbed. But it's important that you hear that stuff. So hopefully if you need this, you get it, you get the notes and you move on. So thanks, guys. This ended up being a regular length lesson. <laughs>